What's going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful, wonderful Friday. A L- little bit later in the day, but man, th- there's still time uh, to take a-, a dump whilst watching the the Vikings news dump for this awesome Friday. Uh, also, my... I'm not a New Year's resolution person, but my resolution is to use the word whilst quite a bit more. Hmm. Uh, Vikings, unfortunately, uh, done with the season, uh, but a lot of them are taking to Las Vegas. Uh, you got Darisaw, you got Nick Muse, your company's computer guy, as well as Justin freaking Jefferson. Now, now JJ, he, he may just be rolling those golden dice I don't know, in his kitchen because it's cool to have gold dice that don't come up seven. Hmm. Uh, but Nick Muse is at the sphere. Now, uh, we were in Vegas recently, sorry, undisclosed location recently, and we wanted to go see the sphere, except man, ticket prices are still insane, insane. But uh, everyone I know, uh, ha- that that's gone to just like the, not, not even like a concert, just like the, the default show, like 4d IMAX, pretty crazy stuff. It's amazing. But also, uh, some of them were on shrooms, some of them were on Molly. So I don't know if, if you're straight or having a couple of those $26 captain and Cokes. I don't know. Uh, and then Darisaw is getting after it. The win. Uh, I think the win is it's up there. I feel like the win and the Aria are two of my favorite places. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Vidara because especially if you're staying there for a while because Vidara was originally supposed to be condos. So each unit, uh, even like the base unit, has like a little kitchenette. Kind of like that if you're going to be staying there for a long time. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, Vikings out winning the day, and hopefully they're winning a couple of dollars. Uh, also, hey, if Darisaw gets extended this offseason, his limits could be raised precipitously. Mm. Uh, something that's also raised. So I feel like the the Bills and their Highmark Stadium uh, shoveling plan, it's definitely raised the ire of some people on social media. So the Bills, uh, they put this out. We're going to need some snow shovelers again help get Highmark uh, Stadium ready for our divisional round playoff game. So th- this always turns into like, you know, a, a class war- warfare proxy war where it's like, oh, uh, the Bills are a multi-billion dollar company and then the, they uh, they rely on their fans to uh, shovel shovel the steps, Sho- shovel the steps, shovel the seats. Uh, but, I mean, 20 bucks an hour is pretty damn good. Plus, if you're a hardcore Buffalo Bills fan, you know, getting 20 bucks an hour, plus if you, if you got like a... Uh, uh, you know, kids, especially teenage kids, that can actually throw a shovel. Uh, I mean, it's a good memory, and it, it's kind of fun. It's a bonding experience, right? Uh, but ooh, also, so heart attacks are related with shoveling snow, uh, especially like wet, heavy snow, since you're getting uh, some intense cardio, and some people don't do intense cardio. Mm. Uh, but we know that the Bills medical staff are very good at treating cardiac arrest, so they got that going on for them. But uh, a lot of people say, like, well, how come you're having to pay – you're having to pay fans 20 bucks an hour versus, hey, uh, why don't you just ha- have a snow removal service like some stadiums do? But I mean, also the Bills aren't alone where you, you look at the you look at the greasy, grimy Green Bay Packers. They're always just like, hey, come out to Lambeau and shovel some snow, eh? All, all that stuff. But I, I think what the Bills should do is, you know, offer that 20 bucks an hour. You know, uh, apparently they're not offering like food and beverages this time, like, like last time around, which I should. But I mean, la- last time half of the stadium was still covered in snow half the seats were still buried because they couldn't get enough people because there was still a travel ban in place uh when they're trying to clear out the stadium and then they turned into general admission like would you be so pissed like like what if you had great seats uh and you were just taking your time either getting to the stadium or you were just hanging out at the tailgate and then all of a sudden you find out oh wait it, it's literally uh, first come first serve I, I i'm i'm sitting up in the owner's box it's like oh I mean, no assigned seats, general admission, like this is a Southwest flight. It's ridiculous, man. But, all right, so what the Bills should do is any fan that comes in and shovels, 20 bucks an hour, but but if the Bills lose, you get a, a flat 1000 bucks. We'll mail it to you. Or maybe it's a $1,000 credit in the team store. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, uh, a little bit of reward. Like, if you all of your hard work is for naught, you should be rewarded. Plus, uh, they should supplement. Like, if they can't get enough people to completely uh, uncover the entire stadium, uh, no, they they should supplement. They should have you know a, a snow clearing service on on standby and go from there, man. Also on standby is uh, Dalvin Cook. So Dalvin let go from the Vikings, and it, it was a cap saving move. And Dalvin and his agent thought that they could get paid in free agency, and it, it worked out for Dalvin. I mean, he got seven million bucks from the Jets. Uh, the Vikings, I mean, the Vikings have definitely had their issues in the running game, but it's pretty clear that Dalvin didn't quite have it 
uh, with the Jets. But now going to the Ravens where, where you got Lamar and running quarterbacks certainly help the, the running back game as well as a better offensive line. And now he's being activated to the 53-man rooster and looks to play uh, Sunday against the uh, excuse me Saturday against the Houston Texans. And I'm rooting for Dalvin, man. Like This is a spot where uh, it's like that Ravens-Niners Super Bowl from 10-plus years ago where it was McKinney and Matt Burke were on the Ravens. Happy that they got a ring. Other side of the ball would have been Randy Moss getting a ring for the Niners, which, isn't that crazy? I mean, San Francisco literally just had, like, Randy Moss, like, late-career Randy Moss. Like, he wasn't... He wasn't that guy anymore, but, I mean, he could still do it. But, yeah, rooting for Dalvin. Also, it's funny that he took uh, Melvin Gordon's spot on the uh, on the 53. And, yeah. uh, also, so ML Football uh, reporting this. Actually, a bunch of people reported this from uh, Rob M- Mahdi. Uh, news, impending free agent quarterback Kirk Cousins and the Vikings have a mutual interest in getting a deal done. Uh, Kirk tells the AP his priority is to win a Super Bowl. Well, that's good. That, that's good to know. Um, of course, this comes on the heels of, oh, Kirk said that he wouldn't mind playing for Belichick. Even though, what's he supposed to say? I mean, the interviewer just asked him, well, would you want to play for him? He's like, no. Hey, you know that guy who won six Super Bowls with Tom Brady? No. I, I, I don't want to play with that guy. No, nah, but, I mean, we're, we're heading to peak BS season and believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. And that, that's a good way to go. But... It, it's still funny, like, uh, you know, you know, pe- people say in the comments, like, well, uh, if you say you don't believe it, how come you're, you're reporting on it? First off, not a reporter. Uh, second of all, because uh, I think it's interesting. And it'd be weird not to talk about. Uh, some of the guys talk about, and now, now w- women's spouses, like, they, they, they always find it weird, because it takes so little for men to be entertained. Like, I'll go to a gathering and maybe it'll be a gathering of you know um well my wife and some of her friends my wife uh, as well as uh like significant others and i'll not know anyone or know very few people but here's what happens uh, or like kids birthday party right uh but here's what happens you get a group of guys together you get a couple of beverages you don't even know have to know each other's names and literally literally all you have to do is start naming off random old school football players or NBA players and or baseball players too. And you can have yourself a, a full afternoon of entertainment, man. And that that's all it takes, especially uh, if some of them are fantasy football nerds too. And then all of a sudden you just dive in deep. It's like, hey, remember when Jerome Harrison put up that, that crazy three-game stretch at the end of 20, 2008 or so, something like that? Yeah, that won me a championship. Blah, blah, blah. That, that's all that it takes. And – Guys will literally stand in a circle and just name off like, hey, Leroy Horde. Hey, Jerry Ball. Hey, Waswa Sarwanga. Um, but uh, a tweet that went uh, a little bit viral yesterday was from uh, Eddie. Sorry, babe, I can't come over tonight. Me and the boys are naming obscure wide receivers in the group chat again. And, I mean, I got some good ones like Devin Aroma should do. Greg Childs. <sighs> Greg Childs will stay healthy, man. Greg Childs would have been the truth. Uh, Moritz, Jerome, Ezekiel, Betteringer. Yeah. Busta Rhymes. I mean, come on. I mean, just the Vikings alone have so damn many of them. Uh, but uh, again, that, that that is all that it takes. We, we men are simple creatures, and that's perfectly fine. It's no big deal. All something that is a big deal. So Daniel Hunter, uh, Vikes fan page, uh, Vikings edge rusher Daniel Hunter has 87.5 sacks since entering the league in 2015. That is the fifth most in the NFL during that time span. Now, what's more impressive is that he missed all the 2020 season with a herniated disc in his neck, as well as missed the bulk of 2021 uh, with the torn pec. So he's down a year and a half. Uh, on most of these jabronis, uh, but he's still racking up and stacking up the sacks. Uh, he was the fastest player in NFL history to 50 sacks, and also is coming off a career high with 16 and a half. And yes, he's going to be 30 in October, but pay Daniil. Pay Daniil, keep him in purple a long time. Mm. Also in purple is uh, Brian Asamoah. So I, I still am holding out hope that Asamoah, who is a bit of a tweener, but he's a physical freak, but he is the modern-day off-ball linebacker. Uh, and I, I think that Asamoah and Pace can form a, a great off-ball duo uh, in the middle of the Vikings defense. But uh, Asamoah was dinged up by injury all season, and you know, that was a big reason why Ivan Pace Jr. was able to rise up. That was a big reason why uh, Jordan Hicks had himself a career year. But uh, B.A. Ha- had a bunch of surgeries and he's good to go. Uh, this from him. Surgery was a success. Can't wait to attack this rehab and get back to work. Uh, know that there, uh, and then he quoted, 
Deuteronomy uh, 7 9. So, Asuma, man of faith, Asuma. I, I have faith that he's going to get off the shine because it, it just seemed like he had several injuries uh, throughout the season that really uh, put him behind the eight ball. But hopefully, knocking on all the wood, uh, full health as well as uh, a, a year, another year into the Flores defense. I think that he can have a huge impact on the Vikings D uh, in 2024. Also, <laughs> huge impact. So the, the, this sort of went viral too. So Miami tight end Cade McCormick is returning for his ninth season of college football. All right. And uh, on three pointed out that he was in the same recruiting class as Jalen Hurts and Nick Bosa. Of course, both have been in the league for you know, four or five seasons and already got into their second contract. Now, th this happens when a player has medical hardships, uh, as well as uh, the 2020 uh, uh uh, Rona season definitely impacts things and you're seeing guys that entering the draft who are 23 24 years old uh, who have five six seven years of experience and McCormick's interesting so he I had to look this up he he was a freshman in 2016 uh, but he was originally at Oregon uh, eventually followed uh, Mario Cristobal from Oregon to Miami uh, but he suffered career end uh, not career end season ending injuries thrice so he was able to get medical waivers. Uh, he was voted like the team's most inspirational player. Uh, by all accounts, he's a dude that just gets after it, and he's an inspiration to the, to the younger guys, mainly because he's like 30 years old. Uh, but, I mean, I'm rooting for him. I, I, I don't think that an NFL career is in the cards, but can he come in Can he come in and just win a Mackey Award? Because you got to think, here's what happens too, like especially in college basketball where if you have smaller schools where players are sticking around for you know the full full run you know three four five years uh, it, it ends up being grown ass men playing against yes a l little bit more talented uh, but one and duns uh, in college basketball and I mean that, that's what's happened with McCormick I mean he, he's literally like 27 years old and he's playing against uh you know 19 year old safeties who are trying to cover him like you you would think that grown ass man strength would win out but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, speaking of winning out, so the Lions are trying to win out. I don't think that they will. Uh, I think that I think they may have shot their emotional wad uh, in the game against the Rams, and I think that they were due for a letdown uh, against the Buccaneers, as well as I think the Bucs, the defense, uh, especially the interior pressure with, with Kansi and Vita Villa, uh, matches up well against Detroit, but it's an argument for another day. Uh, but the Lions are probably going to lose Ben Johnson, their OC, and also they could be losing their DC, Aaron Glenn. Rap sheet, go. A Lions DC, Aaron Glenn, a top head coach candidate for his pro uh, prowess as coordinator and for his leadership, will interview with the Tennessee Titans at Falcons for the va vacant head coaching jobs. South has said, uh, I think that I, I think that Glenn will get the Titans job. I think that was our prediction uh, a couple days ago. And Glenn is a, a leader of men. I loved him as a player. And even though the Lions defense has been spotty at times, I, I think that he's gotten the most of what he has. Uh, and also, now now's going to be the big test. Because you saw what happened to Nick Sirianni once they lost Jonathan Gannon on defense as well as Shane Steichen uh, on offense. And what's Dan Campbell with all of his motivation going to be when you lose Ben Johnson, who by and large is seen as the most innovative uh, offensive coordinator in the league. And what happens when you lose a rock solid dude like Aaron Glenn as your DC? Hmm. I, I guess we'll see uh, what uh, Dan Campbell's made of. Hmm. Speaking of made of, so French fries are made of potatoes. All right. And I'll, I'll bet like, I'm not a huge like French fry guy, right? So it's like if you order a sandwich and you have a choice of fries or something else, I'll generally pick like I don't know slaw or something. Although, uh, does it look like a pass up on fries? Mm. Uh, but all right, so when you have kids, when kids kids are simple creatures. <laughs> they love chicken nuggets. They love French fries. That's really about it. Uh, but Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams, man, come on. So uh, comfy tweet this out. The best fries are the ones that come from your local gyro spot that look like this. And you'll you'll find that um, uh, the like Cisco or, or like the the large restaurant suppliers, like the, they'll have these sort of French fries, right? Where they got a little bit of coating and texture on the outside. They're easy to just drop in, dunk, and you can put them with the gyro. You can put them with your falafel. You can put them with uh, a deli sandwich. You, you, you can do anything, right? But Caleb Williams, I wouldn't lie. These is the weakest ones. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know because, I mean – are, are they the best? No. Are, are they pretty damn good? Yes. And now I have to get into the weeds because 
So I, I used to you know, be a sous chef. I used to work in restaurants. And our, our place would do like pretty damn good, like high-end French fries, uh, but the which we'll get into but the the types of french fries so shoestring think about like freddy's uh crinkle cut think about like culver's and uh, we're, we're not breaking this down by restaurant we'll break this down by type steak fries i i actually feel like steak fries are, are the weakest because I, I feel like i've never had like a good steak fry i feel like they're always a little bit too oily because i, I feel like they just let them soak uh in the oil a little bit too long because they're a larger cut I don't know. Curly fries. I mean, curly fries are great, except they're all about the seasoning. I mean, if you just slap curly fry seasoning on any of these other fries, I mean, I feel like they're just as good. Uh, wedge fries. I mean, at, at that point, just have a baked potato. <laughs> uh, I, I will say waffle fries. I mean, waffle fries are pretty damn good. Yeah, because you, you have that crispness. You have a little bit of texture. You have that uh, a little bit of seasoning. I mean, a waffle fries. Trick. I, I will say the waffle fries, I, I feel like. I feel like aren't really French fries because which one of these other ones would you put like, like sour cream and scallions on? Uh, waffle fries, that feels natural, but would you do that with shoestring fries? Nah, nah, nah. Uh, but long story longer, so I, I used to be uh, a chef. We, we would make these really good uh, fries in-house. So, so we would cut the potatoes, we would soak them in water, blanch them on, on low uh, heat at like 275 in the oil, which, which is key because it, it extracts some of the moisture, uh, gets rid of some of the starch as well as uh, cooks the potato through. Uh, so then when you put it in your normal uh, oil, by the way, make sure your oil gets up to temp. Uh, and I know that's tough to do when you're in the weeds, but otherwise you're going to get a soggy French fry. But, you know, Tree 50, also using peanut oil. Don't use anything else unless you unless you can use beef tallow, which is great. Uh, or Ooh, duck fat. Come on, come on, man. But you got your soaked and then blanched uh, potatoes. And then once you have an order, get that order to 350 and get them nice and crispy. Come on, come on, man. Uh, I, I will say that the best French fries I've ever had are from Bouchon, uh, which is an outpost of the French laundry uh, done by Thomas Keller, uh, the great, like, um, you know, Northern California Napa Valley chef. Uh, but Bouchon is a French bistro. I, actually, most French bistros or French style restaurants will have great French fries. I mean, they live up to the name, right? But I mean, they're they're crispy, they're they're soft on the inside. Uh, they actually, that's exactly like me: crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. Hmm. Uh, also, like they, they use the flake salt, which is just great, just fantastic, man. But also, I don't know what Caleb Williams is talking about here. I mean, the, these can be pretty good. Like, may, oh, maybe since Caleb Williams is in a penthouse in LA, maybe he gets DoorDash all the time, so he never really gets the crispy good good. Uh, so he's got fries that have just been, you know, like sitting in that styrofoam container for like thirty minutes. Well, uh, it would have been twenty, except the DoorDasher had to stop by and get a couple new vape pens and just ripping a, a couple. Oh, like th this is strawberry cotton candy. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. But either way, undraftable or at least fall to eleven. I don't know, man. I don't know. But uh, that's it. That's a beautiful Friday news dump uh, on this great day. You guys are the best. Skull Production Value.